So it's just a brief uh, presentation, as Chris said, because uh, the discussions will be probably more relevant. So Castor, in a few words, uh, it's an open source uh, C++ platform for tomographic reconstructions, which includes PetSpec and CT. Oh, sorry, sorry. Can I just uh, disturb? I hope you switched the recording on by now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so we designed it to be generic as much as possible, modular and extensible. And uh, also uh, what we say for users and developers, like uh, people who just uh, are not obviously comfortable with everything uh, theoretical inside reconstructions that just want to use it, but also useful for uh, uh, researchers in the reconstruction domain. So it's a uh, multi-platform. Uh, it works on Linux, Mac, and Windows. The first release was in March uh, 2017. Uh, the project actually began uh, in the uh, end of 2014. Uh, currently, we have more than uh, 300 people subscribing on the mailing list. And uh, here is the website address, and we just got uh, an article uh, paper accepted in PMB uh, a few weeks ago describing the, the customer. So here are the different collab collaborators. So the, uh, Thibaut and I, uh, Thibaut Merlin and I uh, are the main developers and the designer of the platform. Uh, Dimitris Vizvikis is uh, our spokesperson. And then uh, for the moment, we are four different labs inside the, the French collaboration. Uh, so maybe the main other contributors are Didier Benoit, who wrote all the projectors inside Castor. He's good at that. Uh, Marina Filipovic, who did everything tough time of flight related for Lismon and histograms, and she's also the, the, the main contributor of the, uh, the, post, the reconstruction of the posterior that I presented yesterday. Then uh, Maël Milliardet uh, did a lot of work for penalties and uh, everything uh, maximum a posteriori related, but it's not yet uh, available. And also uh, Valentin Vilzeuf, who, uh, who started the, the gate to cast the uh, tools to, to be able to reconstruct uh, and other people who also contribute, of course. So the main features of Castor, the main idea is that we have a single and unique generic core alg algorithms for all iterative algorithms and any data types. So it includes pet time of flight, spec and CT, and also it's, it works for list mode and histogram data. So I will explain that later, but obvious, obviously uh, we need a dedicated but also flexible input file format, which is specific to Castor. There, is a, there are also two levels of parallelisms. Then for, we have some kind of plugin class systems for a lot of different features. So for the projector, what we call the optimizers. So it's, uh, it's um, the algorithm and the objective functions inside a, a single uh, piece. We call that optimizers. Also for convolvers, image processing. <clears throat> so uh, it's also easy to add a new ge system geometry, uh, even if it's a weird system geometry. Uh, then we have tools for input file conversion for some real systems that we are using, and then we, we share them. And also from gate and uh, simul simulations platform. Uh, but everything uh, to be able to have only one unique generic algorithm for the moment we don't provide any estimation of corrections so for scatters randoms etc so we just suppose that they are supplied with the uh, with the uh, input data so this is the main framework um, so this is a general framework here, and this is just a zoom on the main uh, components of the iterative core algorithm. 
So, um, how to start with that? So we just supply some reconstruction parameters like image dimensions uh, to a number of iteration subsets uh, and uh, any optimizers that you want to use, projectors, etc. Then the data files, uh, it's a header file and a binary file containing the actual data. In the header, you just specify what is the modality. Uh, then the mod, what we, what we call the mod is a histogram or this mod. The number of events, the system name, some uh, acquisition uh, meta data, and then which corrections are supplied or not inside the data file, and all the rest of the data. And uh, aside from this, you, you should provide your uh, system description so, uh, for the scanner. And uh, I will explain all of this a bit later. So the first step is a geometry generation step from the system, uh, the scanner system. Then there are all, all different kinds of finish, initializations. When list mod pet are used, we should uh, build the sensitivity image first. And then this is the main loop of the iterative core algorithm. So as usual, as usual a loop on iterations, a loop over subsets, then there is a unique loop over all events. So I will explain that a bit later, but an event can be a histogram event or a list mod event. It's just what we call a generic event. So that a data file is based on a list of generic events. So we just compute the, the start index of the loop, the stop index and the step based on the number of subsets and also all the parallel, parallelism that is used. And then it's only a few steps. So we first get the event corresponding to the event index. So this is uh, really a generic function. Then behind that, uh, it, uh, uh, it chooses between pet, spec, or CT, list mod, histogram, or whatever we are using. Then from this event, if we see that uh, some deformations are required based on the if we change, uh, if there is a gate change or an involuntary patient motion uh, time tag, anything, so we perform some deformation on the images. Then there is the project step. So here we compute the system matrix elements associated to the event E, and then we store them. So this is only one call to the projector if we, we are using match uh, projectors and then we it is the what we call the optimizer step so the data update step because it's inside the data loop so we just compute the forward model then compute the update terms according to the optimizer which is in used and then back project the update terms into a correction matrix and at the end of this loop so we synchronize all data for uh, if we are using parallelism then, if needed, we perform also uh, image-based convolutions, uh, image-based deformation, and we have the update image uh, step according to the optimizer, uh, which is in use. And then also, uh, if we want, you can estimate or fit some dynamic model after the update step. And also, what I forgot to say is that the all uh, forward and backward projections can be up to 6D images. So it's uh, one, uh, you can have some frames, some time frames uh, with respect to dynamic uh, tracer kinetics, for example. And you can also have two levels of uh, gating for respiratory or cardiac gating. So everything is based on time basis functions. So you can provide any time basis functions that you want. By default, they are just a, it's a diagonal matrix. So you just reconstruct frames, but you can directly reconstruct a time basis coefficient. So that's it. Now I will explain a bit um, more, uh, in more details uh, every step. Can I ask some yeah. first? Uh, so you, you say deformation for every event there, which 
I have two questions. On one is the deformation. If you do it for every sonogram bin, the whole image that seems to be very expensive. Yeah, uh, but uh, when we use uh, histogram data or sinograms, it's uh, they are supposed to be uh, all gate uh, one after each other. So if at this step, um, all the threads are running in parallel. So if uh, any thread see that uh, we change a gate, all the threads are just waiting for each other. And at this step, then a unique deformation is applied. And then we just go to the next gate. Okay. It's the same ID for frames. And if we are in this mode, uh, events are supposed to be uh, aligned in time. So it's the same, we, we just uh, move the image one time. Yeah, well, roughly, yeah. Uh, and then it's a stupid detail. The, I think in, a, in the backwards step, you have the convolution and the deformation in the same order as they are on top, it should be the Opposite yeah, you're right. Exactly, and you're right. Typo. Yeah, exactly, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a typo. Okay. In the code, everything is uh, yeah, great. <laughs> you're right. And the mistake is also in the paper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I should send an error to me. <laughs> so about the data file, so uh, as I said, the data file is a list of what we call generic events. So generic event from identity. So here it can be spec, CT or pet. Then the information that are inside are uh, somewhat here equal. So in the generic event, we have just the time steps, uh, the number of rates that are included in the in the in the event, it's because of uh, some scanners where you have some actual or azimuthal compression that is hardware, so you just uh, don't have any choice. So there can be uh, many rays inside an event. And then there is a list of the uh, element indices from the scanner. So then for prospect CT or PET, you have the different corrections that are according to each uh, to each modality so everything in italic you, know, but you cannot see but everything in italic is optional and then you have the list mode or histogram uh, difference for each modality uh, this and this is not implemented for the moment the list mode uh, ct and list mode spec for the moment list mode is only for pet but uh, it's already implemented it's just not used so then, from the element indices that are provided in an event, this uh, indices should correspond to to some uh, to some uh, detectors indices from each uh, different modality. So to, to describe a PET scanner, uh, we can use the generic descriptions as in gate. So we we use the same exactly the same description uh, as the cylindrical PET uh, scanner in gate. I don't know if you are familiar with that, but it's very, very um, flexible, so you can describe any type of scanner, at least when it's cylindrical. <laughs> and if it's not, and uh, if you want to describe a fancy scanner, you can just use a lookup tables uh, uh, with, uh, with the position and orientation vectors for each detector element so you can really describe the scanner that you want. So for SPECT, uh, so there is a detector part and the collimator part. So for the detector part, it's quite simple. For the moment, we just provide uh, some flat detector. You can either uh, define the, the discretization of the detectors inside the, the scanner itself if it's uh, somewhat uh, hardware uh, for example for uh, for semiconductor scanner or stuff like that for monolithical scanners 
this is up the acquisition menu on the detector, so it's done inside the data file uh, header. So then you just specify how much projections, uh, pro the projection angles, uh, detector sample and size, if it's really relevant, the distance from the center of rotation, the uh, distance from the collimator, and the collimator type. So for the moment, we don't have uh, pinhole or multi-pinhole detectors. We just did an implementation for the a generic multi-conversion collimators from which we can model any type of uh, parallel or slant uh, collimators. Uh, and for the, if we have different uh, um, focal uh, distances for all the beans, you can uh, we just implemented a, a polynomial uh, expression with degree two, and so you can just use a degree zero if you have a if it's monofocal, and then if it's multifocal, you can uh, either use linear models or or degree two polynomial models, and you can also uh, have. Uh, different heads and different collimator for each head. And for the city, for the moment, the implementation is quite simple. It's only uh, an ASCII description, uh, only for flat panels, uh, mainly for CBCT, for convium CT. So you just describe the, the detector sampling and size, and also the distance uh, uh, of the detector or the source from the center of rotation, number of projections, projection angles, the source geometry. Uh, so then, uh, in the near future, we will also add uh, some kind of new definition to enable uh, a curved scanner or, or any type of detector. So in the project uh, moment, we get the uh, even from a uh, given index. So the idea is that from the element in the indexes that are inside the event and the scanner de uh, definition, we will first compute the endpoints, uh, endpoint positions of the ray. So it is generic, uh, then it's in, inside each uh, uh, different types of scanner, it's, uh, there is a specific uh, expression to compute this. And then we can call any on-the-fly projector to compute and to store the non-zero system matrix elements. So the current on-the-fly projectors include SIDON, uh, is a SIDON, incremental SIDON, the, uh, jo the Joseph Red Ribbon uh, projector and the distance driven projector. There is time of flight uh, for list mode and for histogram data in PET. So in the near future also, we will add a generic multi-line management uh, so that if you want to, for example, to compute a projection uh, with a Monte Carlo estimation of the solid angle, if you want to use multiple lines to do that. Because for the moment, we provide this, but only this is specific to the incremental CD projector so we just want to put this implementation uh, one level up so that it can be used with any type then of projector and we will also add the possibility to load the uh, system matrix elements uh, if it's it was uh, already pre-computed so <clears throat> then for the optimizer so uh, inside the loop on events, we have what we call the data update step. So here we have the data from the event, and we also have the system matrix elements from the event pointer. So then we compute 4D forward projection. It's just uh, put 4D, but 6D uh, the same. We so we for project we add the any additive corrections that are included inside the, inside the event. Then we back project sensitivity terms if we are using histogram data. 
So it's done in each uh, iteration. So if we are using, for example, MLEM or any any algorithm where the sensitivity terms are fixed, it's somewhat repetitive because it's done uh, at each step, but at least uh, it's not very costful because all the system matrix elements are already stored, so it's quite fast. And also it is flexible so that for other algorithms like NegML or uh, there are also other algorithms for which the sensitivity terms can depend from the image, the current image. So it allows to do such things. So then we compute the update terms in the data space according to the specific optimizer which is in use. And we, forward, uh, we backward project all the update terms. So this is for the data update step. So then after the, uh, the loop on events, we have the image update step. And here we have the current estimate the sensitivity, image correction terms, any other images for, like, for example, when we are using penalties. And then we compute the new image estimate uh, specific to the optimizer here. So currently, the available ones are MLEM, MLTA for CT. MLEM also works for CT and uh, log recorrected data. NegML, AML, and uh, uh, Square uh, Landleber implementation of, of the least square uh, problem, which also works for uh, log recorrected city data. So, about the computational efficiency, uh, as I say, the main loop over events uh, has two levels of parallelism. We use MPI to split the reading of the data file into equal adjacent parts that are distributed uh, over computers. So you can also use MPI inside a, a single computer, but it makes no sense. It's uh, the design is to use it when you want to split the computation over multiple computers. And then OpenMP for the multi-thread implementation, which just uh, distributes the events over the, thre the threads. However, with the multi-threading, we the current implementation just uses duplicated backward images so that uh, the implementation is thread safe. So it needs uh, more memory. And also all other computationally intensive loops uh, use OpenMP because it's quite simple to use OpenMP. So then, as I said, uh, we call the, comp the projector only once when we are using match projectors. So the system matrix elements are, are stored, and then they are just used for the actual forward and backward projections. And for we tested on many, many, many different situations, uh, and it leads to a speed up factor of about one, from one, uh, one and a half to 3.1, depending, uh, compared on the conventional implementation where the projector act is uh, actually called twice, for the forward and backward projections. And we also did, uh, we had available the Biograph uh, software uh, that we can use uh, outside of the box. So we compared to this uh, software and Castor was 10 times slower on a non-time of flight patient. So with the uh, histone Ram reconstruction, so which is not that bad, but uh, I think that if we may compare with uh, a time of flight implementation, Castor should be <laughs> maybe uh, uh, slower for time of flight uh, reconstruction. And here, this is just the scalability over the number of cores. It was uh, performed on, on a 16 cores machine. So we see that the, the, um, the ideal curve is here. So it's quite good. We are not uh, not too far from the ideal curves. If I remember well, the coefficient uh, was 0 0.85. And there is not much dependence on the number of subsets, so which is quite good also. 
you don't you don't get you don't speed up when you use more subsets. Yeah, of course, you speed up the convergence, but I mean, the, just the, it's the, the comparison between a, a given number of cores and one core okay, so or any number of subsets. Okay. Yeah. It's just that sometimes uh, you can lose a bit of efficiency when you have uh, many different subsets. So, very quick quantitative validation on PET data. So it's a Sigma PetMR data with time of flight. It's an FDG whole body acquisition. So this is on top of the GE implementation. And uh, the caster histogram and the caster list mode uh, reconstructions. So we just have a tiny difference, probably caused by the up. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Probably caused by the different implementations of project tools. Yeah, it disappeared. But profiles are good. Uh, also, all everything uh, quantitative is, is taken into account in the uh, Castor. So it's uh, it's uh, Castor uses the scatter, random normalization, or attenuation corrections that are supplied. But it, uh, it will also compute the, the decay factor and all the other scaling factors. So for SPECT, uh, it's a Symbia Intero SPECT CT dual head system. It's a simple uh, uh, technician acquisition on uh, the yes check quantum. So here, this is a Siemens reconstruction with uh, oh, how it's called with a fancy uh, projector modeling uh, system uh, that I don't remember the name. Uh, maybe there is a white paper on this, but we don't have any detail on what is done inside. So we just tried to mimic this using a huge sieve, so PSF modeling plus uh, smoothing. Uh, and the uh, agreement is pretty much okay. So the background noise and uh, contrast also is okay. It's comparable. And for CT, uh, as we were not able to get scatters, uh, uh, scatter corrections from real systems, so we just performed some simulations and compared it to RTK. RTK. Uh, this is a simple FDK reconstruction for RTK. This is an MLTR Castor rec uh, reconstruction in, in Castor. And also, uh, everything is okay. Everything is in agreement with, uh, with the Phantom. So that was just to, to provide some quantitative validation. So everything is static here. There is no uh, dynamic uh, modeling. So ongoing work. First, on penalized uh, reconstructions, so we have the one step plate, PSRM, and uh, the algorithms for, algorithm from your nodes, the precondition conjugate gradient uh, maximum likelihood. Um, for the penalties, we designed also uh, some kind of uh, plugin class system in which for any penalty, as soon as you provide the, the expression, a uh, function that compute the penalty itself, the, its derivative, first and second order of derivatives, it can be used with any compatible algorithms. And for the moment, as a specific penalties, we just implemented the Markov random field type penalties. So we custom weights, so we can choose different uh, proximity factors different uh, similarity factors with Boucher for the moment. And uh, we will provide also uh, the usual list of potential functions. So about dynamic, uh, yeah, we aim pr probably, if everything is okay, we aim at, at a, uh, a small release in a, a few months uh, for that. About dynamic modeling, so we aim for version three, probably in <laughs> a bit longer time, uh, timing, because we need a lot of validations to, to be sure that everything is okay. 
for the moment the intrinsic time basis functions so i'm by supplying time basis functions uh, which are taken into account directly inside the projections it's working it was validated by zach uh, which is here on remote um, we also designed a plugin class system for dynamic modeling that is performed after image update so it's like we just use a standard uh, algorithm then we use a nested algorithm to perform uh, dynamic modeling and as a specific uh, uh, algorithm we implemented a generalized nested uh, algorithm for linear models and uh, in uh, the nested algorithm can be also MLEM or least square or uh, also weighted least square if I remember Thibault implemented this and uh, then we will probably supply some uh, more specific cases like patlac or um, the spectral uh, spectral methods from Andrew some methods that you can uh, quickly use by just supplying one or two parameters for the moment yeah you have have to supplement a matrix times to the time basis functions. And about motion correction during reconstruction. So the idea is that you have to supply mesh fields. And uh, also, no, there's also a, a rigid uh, possibilities. We just get some parameters for rigid uh, registration. So Positions you can, as I said, use two different tools, and there is also a possibility for evolution. So this is currently under uh, this is under validation, and this is both under implementation and validation. And as uh, future work that is not started yet. We want to implement some kind of generalized sinogram geometries, so which will be compatible with uh, PET spec or CT data, but without any relation to the to a physical scanner. Really, uh, just a mathematical description of the space or the scenario in the sinogram space. And the idea is to provide then some ribbing facilities uh, from any PET spec or CT scanner to any sinogram geometry. And we want to do that for Two reasons for example there are scanners that uh, have uh, way too much crystals like hrt which is uh, unmanageable uh, without using uh, sinograms uh, also uh, if we want one day to go to analytical algorithms we need uh, sinogram geometries so we want also to generalize algorithm for the moment there is only the iterative algorithm we want to make it also virtual so that all other algorithms can derive from it to allow analytical algorithms and also any other, other type like uh, the posterior estimation I, I talked yesterday so for the moment it's a very iterative algorithm with a lot of overloading effort so it doesn't make really sense the idea is to generalize everything and then we want also to to be able to to have just self consistent data files in the sense that they do not depend on any type of scanners they do not require any scanner description so that we just provide a list of events with embedded uh, geometry description of each event so this can be convenient to test uh, many different things and just a few few words about the current main applications uh, at our lab. So there is a reconstruction of the posterior image probability, uh, which is a work of Marina Filipovic. There is a direct uh, direct whole body dynamic parametric reconstruction, which is the work of uh, Zaharias, which is a, a started its PhD this year. And then we will start uh, a collaboration with uh, two different labs in paris to reconstruct acousto optical data 
which is uh, laser data uh, control with ultrasound. And this is why we want this self-consistent data file. <laughs> and that's it. Great. Uh, should open up a lot of questions. Uh, anyone from the room? I'll start with a really basic one. Um, so it, it's in C++, how do users interact with it? Is it through like the command line and then through parameter class? Yeah, it's only command line parameters. Mm -hmm. It's only this for the moment. There's no interface at all, but we want to we want to stick with this for the moment, but with a very, very general uh, command line uh, argument. So when when you want to use any type of projector, you just say, for example, uh, option minus proj, then you choose your projector, you give the list of options uh, that goes with this projector, for example. So it's we want to have it uh, flexible, and then so that we can just uh maybe later provide an interface just that we generate a common line but that was not the uh, we are all using in the collaboration or, uh, common lines and it's not a problem for us so that was not uh, a name at the beginning so the, for the moment it's just uh, just this okay. yeah for the for the random and scatter, you say that you pass it from like you have an, an estimate that is from two to five. So this means that there's no implementation whatsoever in scatter for the separate estimate and the exactly. random, or yeah. is this, uh, I mean, something that you want to do? That's or something we just at the beginning we say that we will not provide it because uh, we wanted to focus on the reconstruction part okay. but then we don't exclude the, the idea of computing them but uh, we are not specialists in, uh, in uh, uh, correction estimations so uh, okay. that's and for the generic for generic purposes it was too we think it was too difficult to include this uh, from the start so we'll see in the future but for the moment it's not uh it's not at all uh, uh, something that we will look for in the near future but also everything is uh everything is already done in steer so <laughs> <laughs> yeah for each generic event, for example, you have the number of counts, then the scatter rate, the random rate, mm -hmm. the normalization coefficient. Okay. Can I ask something about spec? It might be, I've not understood or just missed it in the slide. When you're saying you can change the distance to the collimators or the distance from the, the center rotation for the collimators, is that? Just circular orbits, or can you do non-circular orbits? Uh, you can specify a different center of rotation distance for any projection also. Okay. Either you say that it's constant, or you can give one Which for any for all projection, okay. which is the okay. case for real data, because okay. uh, usually you have the correction for the center of rotation for, for each projection. Okay. I have a question about the city slide. Using yeah, it's a simple FDK. Yeah. And, uh, and then the cascade construction. MLTR, uh, yeah, the algorithm from your end node. It's uh, simply MLEM and least square from Land Weber, but using uh, log pre corrected data. Any questions from online? Not from the people without the microphone. <laughs> uh, what's right? Can I ask about, uh, have, you ever, have you ever thought about doing any GPU or not? <laughs> That's a good question. 
<coughs> GPU is a specialization of uh, Latin laboratory in Brest. But we tried. The problem is that uh, Castor is designed to be generic. So GPU is not generic. <laughs> so it needs a specific implementation. So what we tried to do is to put the projector computation inside the GPU so that we just do not touch on the, the current uh, Castor organization of the iteration loop. And uh, the problem was that the, the projector, uh, projector computation was indeed way much faster, but then we need to get back the system matrix elements. So it was a complete bottleneck. So it just didn't lead to any speed up factor. And in fact, it led to, uh, to less efficiency. Yeah. <laughs> so we, did, we will probably just uh, quit on that, yeah. But we will definitely try to use vectorial implementations. We, are, uh, we already did it for the projection part and for different parts, but it was uh, uh, some preliminary tests and we get maybe 20% acceleration factor on a machine with uh, eight uh, float numbers inside a vector. So it's not that much. But how? Um, how do you implement that? Do you rely on OpenACC or something or CL? Uh, VC. VC. Yeah, for vectorial computing uh, library. Okay. Yeah, it's a very convenient one that uh, provides some uh, C++ functions or implementation of new types, in which uh, both Windows and any architecture is taken into account. Uh, so it's just invisible for us. This is a good one, yeah, we, because we we just spent uh, a week with Didier Benoit doing that, and in uh, one day, uh, one day was uh, sufficient to learn um, how to use it. Why do you think? Um, I mean, why why is it that you're ten times slower than the bio? Okay, I have no idea how fast Stero, is, is Biograph really fast? Is, I don't know how Stero it is, yeah, it is quite fast because it uses SIMD, uh, uh, SIMD uh, vectorial computation. And it's also certainly optimized uh, with respect to the geometry. Yeah, if I, yeah, I remember the reconstruction for the Biograph is uh, always uh, with a uh, a voxel size matching the sinogram size. It's an implementation from uh, the, ah, I don't remember the name of the guy. Pinky Home? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so there is a matching between uh, sinogram view, uh, as it, uh, radial spacing and voxel spacing, and the image is shift with respect to the, to the view of the sinogram. Mm -hmm. And everything is vectorial, so uh, all lines are computed for four by four. So it's somewhat uh, quite optimized. Yeah, I think Stero is slower. So it's just the fact that it's, I mean, uh, both Casper and Stero are quite general. Yeah. I think the biograph is obviously just tuned to its one. Yeah. Topic. Yeah. But also for Castor, uh, as we needed to, to use a different voxel size than uh, the one optimized for the biograph, we used the Sidon in the projector if we use the, the Joseph implementation which is the one used in Siemens by Siemens. Uh, in fact Siemens use unmatched projector which is the Joseph one for forward and the implementation the voxel driven implementation for the backward. But anyway uh, we use the Sidon so it was a bit uh, we had an advantage uh, from that. If we use Joseph I think Joseph projector and Castor is about uh, one five two times uh, two, two times uh, slower than Sidon. One question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yep. Oh, just one only as a side. You mentioned that you were using simulated as well as real data in things like CT and etc. Uh, what kind of high resolution are you aiming at? Is there some sort of maximum that 
are you trying i'm trying to work out whether some new machines which basically will come on and you'll be able to do better in caster because it's flexible i can imagine some of these uh specific vector machines having a limitation <laughs> Tough question. If you're, you're just generic MPI, open MP, at least you get an <coughs> advantage. I'm not quite sure what, what your maximum scale you thought about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's hard to answer. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what is the one that you are aiming? Oh, well, I, I can get you X-ray CT up to 8K by 8K, I guess, in the next two years, but uh, the volume for, for corresponding, but that's that's quite big. I think it may work, but it will be, it will be obviously slow. It will yeah. be slow, yes. <laughs> the CT reconstruction here. Yep. I think the data Detector was uh, something like 600 to 600 pixels and maybe 900, uh, 900 projections. So one iteration for CT, I think on a machine with 16 cores lasted probably like one or two hours. Okay. It was long. <laughs> <laughs> because for CT, we use a distance driven projector, which is also quite slow. Okay, thanks. Any other questions from online? Not at all. You mean, the, yeah, obviously, if the phantom just uh, leaves the, the, the cone, you will have some problems. But no, as it is iterated, we just do nothing about it. But here, in this case, the phantom was inside the cone, but not in the extreme, uh, actually, extent. There was obviously some, uh, some kind of artifacts, in the extreme slices. Uh, I think it, uh, so the, the aim is to, to try and at least start a discussion how uh, we talk to each other in a way, yes, mm -hmm. with the software. And because of that, because also because there's a few other people online, I thought maybe I didn't prepare anything, but if I grab up one of the slides I've given before or set of slides, on uh, stir re so surf reconstruction, not really on stir. That might uh, might be useful for the people who haven't heard this, and all the rest can go to sleep. I was sort of data higher. Can you read data types too many? Can you read scanners? Yeah, for the moment, we just provide the ones that we use. So there is uh, the PET MR scanner from GE, the Biograph, the old version, uh, the MCT uh, is the next one providing, provided. In fact, in our lab, we also have everything working with uh, the Siemens Inveon scanner, the ones, the HR Plus, it was with an old, uh, old library. So we may just uh, give an effort to put that. Uh, but um, for Philips system, it's a bit more complicated. Because Philips are not really open to, uh, to the research world. I mean, not uh, really open to, to the same thing. Oh, they are starting. Uh, some people in Germany uh, will be able to have uh, a conversion tool with uh, probably one of the latest systems. Maybe not the optical one. But, uh, I don't remember the name of the system. Ah, yeah, good question. Uh, no, it's uh, simply interfile format because uh, uh, we find it uh, quite flexible sure. also. Yeah. Have you, have you uh, haven't compared at all, but do you know if the ACE file headers between Stir and Casper are compatible? 
Ah, good question. No, I don't know it. <laughs> there is a standard, but that the standard is <laughs> 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> we started from the standard, and then we are uh, we are uh, things so that it can be compatible with other readers, but uh, it's a work in progress. Yeah, we should probably sync up on that. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's already one action item, <laughs> I think. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll quickly go through this, yes, uh, because some of this is not, not appropriate. Uh, this is a bit on the grant, but just to say that we have two bits in the grant which are about network and the other one is on and so today a bit of both uh, we'll talk about this the um, the surf synergistic image reconstruction framework uh, is intended for the and 40 we don't go to 60 at the moment anyway uh, for both PET and MR but then a lot of it will be used for other modalities as well clearly um, and our our target audience is a bit more researcher oriented uh, but we want it to be simple so that people who don't have a lot of uh, experience with image reconstruction can get away with it um, open source okay so our our uh, main architecture that we are uh, that we sort of aim for uh, is to have a framework which sits on top of a number of other things um, and that ideally we are then able to to uh, switch between the relevant engines as I said before I don't think we're quite there yet uh, because as usual you start off with saying it's something we would let get to with one package and then that sort of means you tie yourself down a little bit to that particular package so um, we didn't we didn't start from it from saying oh let's build a generic infrastructure that will work for any package and then just spot a few win we we started with well we need to get stir and gadgets from to work how do we do that um, so we are now thinking a bit more on, on how to lift that up, if you like. Um, however, the, the advantage, I think, of having those two particular packages is that uh, Stir and Gadgeton are really very different as yeah. uh, philosophy yeah. goes. Mm -hmm. And so that was a bit of a challenge to put that all in, in one framework. Yeah. And so I think we learned from that. So I, that might might mean that it will be easier to incorporate Castor, but uh, I don't know. Um, so yeah, so the surf is not intended to be heavyweight. It probably is a little bit more than it than what we hoped, but uh, uh, the, the big functionality sits in the in the engines, and then our users do want to have MATLAB and Python. Okay, that's sort of current status, whatever. And so that's that's an example on how the code would looks like. So as opposed to command line stuff, Stir originally was a lot of command line stuff. You now have Python and MATLAB interfaces to it. Um, um, but so Surf went the other way around. We started off with Python and MATLAB interfaces and then said, well, okay, we need to now clean up our C++ interface. But the, uh, the aim is to have all of those look exactly the same. Um, so that's sort of how this looks like. Uh, there are examples on there. Uh, just to what, what I I thought I mentioned compared to your presentation, at least on the on the pet side, we are uh, obviously influenced by Stir, and so a, a lot of that is is heavily oriented towards objective functions. And then saying, okay, I have an algorithm that wants to optimize an objective function. While you seem to be more oriented towards, I have an algorithm. Yeah, exactly. And, and so, yeah, so that might mean that some of the things that we had in mind might not work for you in some sense. Mm -hmm. And how we get that to talk to each other, I'm not 100% sure. 
Uh, on the MR side, we don't have any objective functions or so uh, at all yet, because right now we only provide an interface to the analytic algorithms of Gadgetron, although it will be easy to have an interface to the uh, conjugate gradient or whatever implementation that they have there. But um, <laughs> what we did with, with, uh, with STIR is that you can, you can interfere. You can say, I want to have only one update or one iteration, or, or you only get the gradient like, like it's over here, yes. Um, OK, so my compass, whatever. Right. Um, just also for the people online, uh, what might be useful is that we do have a, an exchange program. So if you ever want to visit another site in the UK, we have money for that. Uh, plenty of money, actually. So, and similarly for people in the UK who want to go you know, to another place, we do have money for that. But it has to be PetMR related uh, somehow in some yeah. fashion. You know, uh, right? Okay. So maybe that gives people some idea on on, on the differences. Oh, one one thing also: but we, uh, all our code is Apache two license. I believe you guys are GPL. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. I mean, we. Yeah, it's a GPL, not the LGPL. Yeah, yeah, we want it to be. Hardcore, but yeah. right. Yeah. Well, it depends what you call hardcore <laughs> yeah. open source. But, uh, we want it to be uh, as well, but uh, anyway, different philosophy anyway. So that uh, that's potentially a little bit of a problem, with, because obviously GPL says everything needs to be GPL. But yeah. so I think what what we would solve that by saying. The framework is Apache 2. If you happen to want to use it with with the customer, then your licensed software will be GPL. But that doesn't mean that the framework itself needs to be GPL, as far as I understand, because you can say, well, I, I, I so. don't yeah. use customer. As soon as the source are, are still open, no, right. it's okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So, um, what I didn't really do is to to sort of have some more detailed slide on 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 the architecture, um, which is maybe where we where we should go now. Um, so, I mean, what what do we what do we think might be a way to sort of take a baby step to say we integrate uh, or, or we allow Castor to be called from surf, even if it's something like uh, just just run the reconstruction, you know, get an image back as opposed to actually being able to uh, use a, a component of uh, that might be something obviously I don't feel to just say uh, one function that then calls the relevant command line stuff um, I, I think we want to have it a little bit more integrated if your stuff is it or is it all just straight on that command line you can use parameter files for each uh, for each component. The parameter files for our projectors or one for optimizers. So that's the test where we could have been around twice a bit, right? Yeah. Um, so if if you would want to talk to the C plus plus layer, is that is that a good idea or a bad idea or? Uh, in fact, uh, uh, for the moment in Castor, as we started. Uh, not that uh, not very long ago, we only have the some in some way the, the reconstruction uh, command line. So we are starting to make it more like a library, more and more, so that you can use just uh, one piece or another. But for the moment, it's uh, very far from your the, the possibilities that you have with Steer. 
where you can just call a component or another. It's very far from that, so a lot of effort should be made to do that. Right. So as you said, for the moment, it's more like just call a reconstruction. Yeah, it would be, it's not possible for the moment to, to just use one or one component or another. Okay. We are too far from that, yeah. Um, so, anyway, but but are what are your thoughts? How how do you think Surf would be useful for you, and how would you do? How would you think an integration like that Maybe could useful. work? Yeah, uh, would be useful for the ML part. As you said, it's uh, we also just discuss that, but it's impossible to, to merge MR and PET reconstructions yeah, yeah. to a uh, single stuff. So also having Castor working uh, aside from from gadget from it should be something really interesting. Right. So would we I mean, maybe maybe the thing to do then is to sort of come up with a, a minimal interface that would be feasible in a relatively short time frame mm -hmm. and still useful, um, which I guess would mean being able to read your images. Yeah. First thing. Yeah. Uh, and knowing about your data format somehow that we at least can say here is a file even if we can't read the data into the raw data sonogram data whatever into surf because that might be a bit difficult if you're quite generic um but sort of consider it as a blob if you like and then and just say okay you can at least pass it to the reconstruction that can only then be custom. Mm -hmm. um, for the moment in CIRF, for the pet part, it's like in STIR, you provide prompts and a normalization file, and then everything is managed by STIR. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so if you want to base, to base a reconstruction on the same input, so probably with we'll need to go into STIR to estimate corrections and then to output uh, a Castor data file with corrections. That we yeah, sure. Complicated. Um, okay, but that, that I think might be possible. We, we, I mean, we would be running the corrections to output the attenuation factors and the normalization file and whatever into a story file. And so as long as you guys could read that, yeah. uh, we should be fine. Yeah. I think. Um, that doesn't seem to be hugely complicated. No, no, no. It's the same from Siemens. It's interfile sinograms. Right. Actually, for G, it's somewhat uh, the same. It's also right. just standard binary sinogram with a right. head of file, which is either ASCII or binary. Right. So yes, it's quite easy to read uh, such data. Right. Um, I, well, I suppose vice versa. Say, can is it? Well, it's maybe longer term to let uh, Stir read, surf. Uh, sorry, uh, Castor sinograms or so. That's maybe not directly on the on what we need to do. I think no, no, because for the moment we uh, we we use. Uh, we use other programs first to right. to build the database. Right. But again, we need corrections. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. And then, so we can read the data, and we can sort of say, uh, presumably, have a few. 
uh, pre-cooked caster reconstruction algorithms or whatever that then withdraw the parameter file or the relevant command line, call it, and boom, mm -hmm. out comes the image back. You read it in. That's pretty much it, I suppose. Yeah. And yeah, because the, the main difference, as you say, will come from the optimization uh, step, which is which was served differently from STI and Castor. Oh. But all the different uh, uh, the lines you showed up in, steer, uh, in surf, uh, maybe when you suggest say the dimensions, everything like that initialized. I mean, if you are using Castor, it can just output the different parts of the command line. Right. So it may be not too complicated. And in Castor, could you can you just run one um, iteration of your command line? Yeah, you can use then uh, any uh, initialization image, so you can stop your at then, then launch again. Okay, uh, I guess I can. Uh, anybody on online can suggest where maybe of the examples where we're doing that i think that i'm not set up at the moment to run to run any of this but uh let me just have a look at What type of scanners are you supporting currently in PET in Steel? Um, right now they have to be cylindrical and they actually we don't take in stir, we take don't take block uh, sizes, whatever gaps into account, mm -hmm. which is a problem. Uh, there is there are people in Zurich who uh, have sorted this out there about to publish a paper on it, and then at some point it will get into uh, okay. stir to they have they're developing um, an animal scanner with interesting block geometry where not all blocks are the same size okay um, but it is still mounted on a cylindrical country mm -hmm. if you like it's not that the blocks are yeah anyway yeah, whatever yeah. and so they've been working on and I, I hope to get a pull request on that relatively soon, two, three months, I suppose, maybe after the publication mm -hmm. of the paper. Um, but how do you walk from Sinogram to the scale? Because are you still using Sinogram in this case? I mean, Sinogram in the geometrical sense, or are you using more generic histogram and then you know the relation for each beam? I, I think they will still be using Sinogram. So at the moment, uh, in, in the current code, pretty much is all sort of Sinogram oriented. And you, there is some code then to say, for a particular element in Sinogram, I know where the reactors are and what. So that's an Data uh, object, and then projector will ask for that, and then, okay, now I know the line. I need, I know, I need to do. Okay, a bit messier and a bit too low level 
Oh, we're trying to clean yeah. that up a little bit at the moment. Okay. But, uh, yeah. So probably also one of the main differences here, as we started uh, the other way, right? By saying that we will be completely flexible about the geometry. Right. Want to quit sinogram? Uh, right. Yeah. So that would that would take us a bit of time. Uh, right. So this is, uh, I don't know if you can see it. This is an example so of uh, one step late reconstruction in this case. So we, we have an acquisition model which will, it's a stir one, whatever. So that would correspond to your uh, different acquisition models that you have, SIDM or whatever. Um, and we are making a log likelihood, but okay, maybe, maybe you wouldn't do that in your case. And we say, this is the reconstructor. We set the objective function. We set the input and then We'll set the initial image and then as opposed to just calling the reconstructor in this particular demo it will say uh, do one update so one iteration which is what uh, Richard was asking there if we would be able to do that for you as well so and then okay we get the uh, current estimator out and do some filtering and whatever. Uh, all of that really isn't, isn't stir or anything like that. So that would just apply. Um, yeah, what, what's good here is that if you do only one update, then you keep everything in memory, everything already allocated so sure. you can call it again. So for us, it will be uh, rec uh, launching the command line. Uh, Sure, but fine, I mean. Yeah, normally the data file just stay in cache, so it's like course, you yeah. just don't uh, have to read it uh, again. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so normally, uh, so that, that there's another example here where you just say, okay, I have, I have my reconstructor set up now, you say reconstruct, then it will do the whole thing, yes. Yeah. Uh, but. So you don't yeah, you use this if you're prototyping, and you don't really care if you're prototyping. Slower, right? Sorry? I mean, you were saying that if, if you were to do this in Casper, it would be slower because you know, you'd save the file. Yeah, because you have to call the program. Uh, yeah, but we were just saying, I mean, you don't even do this if you're prototyping. Yeah. You, you don't really care. If yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, so uh, I'm, I'm sort of, because what Richard is asking, building this in wouldn't be too hard to do. If we, if we can actually call the reconstructor, then we, we sort of have the capability to do this as well might be slow but okay uh, but then there are there are demos that use gradients and whatever and that wouldn't work and so yeah. you just say okay we can't support that for mm -hmm. forecast yeah. yeah because when you decide on what objective function you are using uh, you have separate data fidelity terms and penalty terms or how how is it yeah. working yeah, yeah. So you choose uh, the distance, uh, I mean, the data fidelity terms can be what? Poisson like you or MD square? At the moment, in the only thing that's implemented here is the Poisson like. Okay. Okay, that's what's implemented. Okay, and then when you call your, your specific algorithm, you just check if it's compatible with the type of uh, Likelihood that is uh, yeah well, okay because we thought a lot about this and we we somewhat made uh, a list of what is existing in the literature and how much how many algorithms are sufficiently uh, flexible to accept any kind of data likelihood and any type of penalty. And we saw that the answer is this number is very small. So that was we decided to put everything inside uh, right. one al algorithm concept. Right. Yeah. 
Um, this is, yeah, this is, there, there is no ideal uh, way of doing things. Uh, I think, so, uh, Edo mentioned uh, CCPI for a bit, so they have a common image library, I think, CIL, and they try and do this for multispectral CT. Uh, and uh, there are, their main concept is also algorithms as opposed to objective okay. functions. Make at least the phase between all those so yeah. for the same as possible. So, yeah. so you don't really need to know which one you're working. Um, okay. Is there are there any comments from online? Otherwise, uh, I think per the discussions are probably too detailed for a larger audience. Than Turn it down. And I think no. Okay. Um, so I I think we have an idea of your capabilities and, and hopefully also from ours. So yeah. then you only end up finding some time to do. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> So let's let's find a few PhD students. <laughs> all right. Well, Chris, thank you all for. Uh, this is a. Yes, yes. So is there is there an issue with license? I've seen it's GPL three. Yeah. So there there would be, but I think the way that we have to solve that is to sort of say the interface to Casper uh, Caster sorry is a uh, is an optional component. And if you actually want to use Castor, then that means that the program that you're going to use is completely GPL licensed. But yeah, so one approach we use with CCPI when we touch Astra, which is the projector, well, one projector we can use is that we totally abstracted it, put it in a different repository, which is GPL3 then. And then if you want to use it, our software is Apache 2, and then you clone also the other repository and then your GPL, but the, the two remain separated. So that's, that's the strategy probably here as well. But here, uh, as a first prototype, if we go in the, with the idea of just calling Castor from the command line, then it remains completely separated. It's like, CIRF is just making some Castor command lines and then Castor is called. So it's like they are completely independent. Yeah, I, I think, uh, I mean, that's sort of a licensing, this, I mean, technical discussion. I, I, I think GPL doesn't really care if you call it from a command line or not. I think it says if it's essential functionality, it means you're using it and therefore it needs to be GPL. You're doomed. So you're doomed, yes. <laughs> um, I didn't know it was that extreme. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, we, we can check that. But I, I, th I think it's more of a technical issue in this yeah. particular case. I think uh, the is a good one for that. I would then say all stuff and then do all right. Communication goes so if your people want to join our software meetings and have further discussions there, that would be wonderful. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, that. yeah. And again, to come. We should continue to yeah. and benefit from each other's experience. Yeah. And then we send some people to sunny Paris. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paris yeah. is sunny for you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Avignon would be better. Yeah. Because, uh, okay. Um, all right. Uh, okay, I see some messages here. 
there's some okay some uh, ccpi ct test data that might be good to try good thanks all and uh talk to you in our next meeting thank you bye-bye